Hello, this is program number five, video number five on our series on Santeria. What do you know about it? I knew nothing about it a few weeks ago. And I've learned more than I really wanted to know. And it was a little shocking and I decided to make a series of videos uh, on this uh, that um, might expose a little bit, provide some information on what Santeria is. I understand that very well-meaning people, people that... I have, it's just Santa Maria has been a part of the culture, engage in it, and really don't have a great deal of understanding of what it actually is. And that's why I'm producing these, the series of videos. This is number five. I want to talk about the initiations involved in Santa Maria, and it, we call that, it's called the Asiento. I may not be pronouncing everything correctly, but a-S-I-E-N-T-O, the Asiento. Uh, there are really a number of different kinds of initiations. One of the early ones is called the Guerreros or uh, the, the Warriors. This initiation, one receives several orishas. Now, when it says receive, in my view, they possess. And actually, a Santorian would not disagree with me. They become possessed with these orishas. They become possessed. It's, it's up front. They, the problem is simply they don't understand the nature of these orishas. They think that they are the servants of Olodumare, the, the god of, of the uh, Yoruba religion. But in fact, they are not. They're demonic spirits. Now, now, you might be tempted to think, oh, this guy's wacko. I'm going to stop, stop listening to this. But you don't know if what I'm saying is really true or not. My experience tells me that they, in fact, that's exactly what it is. So, um, so here we have the initiations uh, for, the, for the warriors or the guerreros. And uh, they... I uh, said, when, when you have them, they, they live by your front door. So you're, every time you go in and out, here you go out, you're either be protected by these, um, uh, these orishas, these warriors protect you. And uh, they have to be placated um, in some way, at least every Monday and other times as well, uh, depending on what is determined by the, the seashells. Pretty quick, the life of the Santorian becomes mixed up with what the seashells say when they are thrown and determined what you're to do. Another initiation is called the necklaces. It's called the ilekis, probably mispronounced again, or the colares in Spanish. The actual necklaces are draped around the neck, neck of the initiate. Um, and they are sacred and are a sign of the Orisha's presence and protection. It's sort of like wearing an amulet, I suppose, a magical thing to ward off uh, evil and harm. Uh, the Santorians will say that receiving of the necklaces is similar to the ceremony of baptism. And it, uh, it is necessary that's one of the, this is one of the entryways into becoming a follower of the Orishas. Now, the Ascento is a word used to describe the basic nature of an initiation. The word Asiento means seat and actually reveals the real nature of Santeria. Santerias do the initiating. And the first task is to ascertain by a means of the seashells who is the initiate's personal orisha? There are a number of them, between 20 and 25. Now that orisha is said then to watch over the initiated person throughout his or her life, guiding and protecting. Thus the orisha will be constantly petitioned by the new member. It is kind of like a built-in obsessive, obsessive compulsive thing. Uh, in the New World, in the Hispanic world, the Orisha is referred to by a saint's name. And each of the Orishas, each of them have a saint's name. Appeals are then made to the Orisha in order to secure healing, wealth, to cast spells, or to perform other forms of magic. 
Now, the outcome of the asiento is that the initiate is mounted by the orisha, much like a rider mounts a horse. The initiate becomes the seat of the orisha, which takes possession of him or her. Now, here is seen the real nature of Santeria. The orisha is no god or saint or guardian angel, which is what the Santerians teach, but it's an actually an unclean or evil spirit. Here is where the facade of Santeria is broken and its true facade is evident. The Orisha is a demon, as are the Egu or Egun, the so-called Holy Dead. The Holy Dead are simply demonic or evil spirits. And so associated with the Egun are all the spirits associated to a person for protection and guidance. In other words, uh, you have an ancestor, an uncle, father, somebody. And when you receive the Holy Dead, you receive not only the spirit of that supposed long ago ancestor, but every spirit that had possessed this Holy Dead one. So you get filled up pretty quick. It's more like the, the legion of demons that Jesus encountered in the Gospels. So there's a whole host of these spirits that invade the life of the initiate. Um, so the idea of being mounted in the ascento is really an indicator. Um, Arishas are not hidden or remote force forces. This is not playland. This is not fantasy land. This is not dreamland but they actually become involved in the everyday life of the, of the person. They will actually talk face to face, particularly in the seances, which we'll get to at another point. They, they, they will talk to you and I'll talk back. It is real time interaction and it is this event with the Orishas that account for the rapid growth of Santeria because they, the people encounter something very re real and something very spiritual. After the completion of the as asiento, the initiate is said to be born anew and is given a new name. It is clear that Santeria is really a clever counterpart or better counterfeit to biblical Christianity. And it became more and more so as Santeria embedded itself and syncretized itself with Roman Catholicism in the early centuries. So that is the end of that program. Next week, we're going to be looking at magic and its essential nature. So long.